now. She says, I was debating with a Protestant recently. He said his authority comes from the word of God and no other. How should I respond? Yeah, a lot of things you can say. The first one is, how do you know that? <laughs> it's a good question. How yeah. do you know that? Who yeah. told you that, right? Who told you that? Jesus didn't tell you that. If by the word of God you mean scripture, which is probably what he means. Jesus never said that. On the contrary, Jesus said exactly the opposite. He said, you guys search the scriptures because you think that in them you'll find eternal life. But you neglect me, mm -hmm. and I'm the one to whom the scriptures point. And you have set, heard that it was written, but I say to you. Christ actually contrasts his own person and his authority with the text of the Old Testament as understood by the, his contemporaries. So he, he, doesn't, he doesn't indicate that we should advert solely to the text of the Bible for our rule of faith. He never says that anywhere gave no instruction even about writing the New Testament documents. Those weren't even in existence during the ministry of Christ. So how can we say that Christ wants us to consult the texts of the New Testament as our rule of faith if he never even mentioned them, but gave us a different rule of faith, namely, whoever hears you hears me. On this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So the first question I would ask is, well, how do you know that? You didn't learn that from Jesus. The second question I would ask him is, okay, so you're going to make your stand on the word of God, i.e. the scriptures. How do you know what they are? How would you recognize a scripture if it were given to you? How, would you, how do you know a text is scriptural? He says, well, I've got it right here. It's, it's, it's Zondervan printed it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Zondervan's got divine authority. Dude. Baker Bookhouse has divine authority. King James has divine authority. Is that what you're telling me? So you, you've got this, this compilation in your hands. And you know that's the word of God. Why? How do you know that? How do you know that? Well, I mean, it was, it was compiled, it was printed by some human agent. Did that agent have divine authority? Well, interestingly, the answer to the question is yes, there was an agent that compiled the books and put them together and promulgated them as the word of God. And it did have divine authority, but it was called the Catholic Church, not Zondervan Publishing House, yeah. right? And Christ established the church, gave it the power of binding and losing whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And it was the Catholic Church that actually collected the texts of sacred scripture and promulgated them as the word of God. Now, you know, sometimes a Protestant will say, well, they may have, they may have done the archival work, but, you know, the authority comes from God. Yeah, but you still have to deal with the problem of, there are 27 New Testament books, mm -hmm. 66 or 70 three old, you know, total Old Testament and New Testament combined, depending on how you number the seven. All right. Uh, but they're not the only books in contention in antiquity, in the early Christian era. There are other books floating around claiming to be the word of God. Different Christian communities have disparate canons of the Bible. Even to this day, Christians have disparate canons of the Bible. How do you know you've got the right one? How do you know? you got to have divine authority to know. It's a fair question. Yeah, so how do you know that the Bible is your rule of faith? How do you even know what the Bible is, mm -hmm. right, if you don't have a divine authority that tells you? And what, in fact, did Jesus say about the authority to govern the church and teach the faith? He didn't indicate the Bible. He indicated the teaching church. And finally, I would say that uh, you can't live that way consistently. You, you cannot live consistently with the notion that your only authority is the Word of God. All right, I'll give you an example. You step into the street like I did today, actually. I got sleepy at the office, so I decided to take a walk around the block. Mm, okay. And I stepped into the street, not paying attention where I was going, into oncoming traffic. Whoops. And I said exactly that. Whoops. And I, I jumped out of the way. Uh -huh. Okay. Who told me to do that? And I had to, it's human action. I stepped out of the way of an oncoming car. Why? Did the word of God tell me to do that? No not the scriptures. No scripture that says don't step in front of oncoming cars. Reason showed me to do that. Mm -hmm. Reason taught me to do that. Reality was the teacher. Now that, that may not be the only authority in my life, but it's an authority. Now the Catholic faith actually says when reason conveys some truth to you and you know that it's true, like don't step in front of the oncoming car, you have a moral obligation to obey reason. There was no scripture that told me what to do there. Mm -hmm. But my, my, my reliable prudential judgment told me, step out of the way. And the Catholic yeah. faith would say, you have an obligation to obey reason. Now, if you really hold strictly to the Bible alone, 
then it should be a matter of indifference morally, whether you step out of the way or not. Susan, appreciate your text. And here's another text now.